Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Thursday, May 6, 2021. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. From an intraday perspective today, it was a really, really interesting day. Wait till you see inside the numbers in terms of the commentary. Forget about stocks on the move. That's a whole different bucket of fun. Let's focus on the SPY. And when we get to inside the numbers, you'll understand what I'm discussing. It's all that stuff that's mentioned early in the morning, ahead of time, setting the table for the day. And then all of a sudden you look back at the end of the day and forget about all the noise in the middle and they did the thing, which was one of the first things I discussed at Zero Dark 30. It is pretty remarkable when you think about it. What was one of those things? Well, we're going to discuss it now because we're looking at the daily chart. We're interested in what's jumping off the page on the daily chart. It's pretty obvious right now. So the trend is our friend until she throws your stuff out the second story window. The second thing is she's holding the 20 period moving average or home base. What's the 413.50 all about? What's that horizontal trend line? It looks like that was low of day. Well, it's interesting enough, really wasn't low of day. It was close to low of day. Low of day was 413.68. 413.50 was my buy area. Ouch. It's not really as it sounds. There's other opportunities as the day unfolds. We'll get to that later. But what's jumping off the page is really the trend is the dominant thing. They're running higher. All they've done is eat time off the clock, and they haven't really wavered from the same thing we've been discussing about for days and days and days. What is that thing? As long as they hold the breakup candle low, which they ran one test. The low is 412.79. They ran one test. The low here the other day, 411.67. And here we go. So what did they do today? They ran a retrace of the tail candle set on the 4th, which was two days ago on Turnaround Tuesday. What is all that about? That's something that's discussed in detail in the course, along with a lot of other things, Lazy E-Mini Trader. It's where we learn the foundation of how the market works. So back to the thing that they're actually doing. Well, if you look at this from this perspective, Here's the breakup candle. They tested the low. They were putting in a bull flag pattern. This was Fed day up here. So we'll call that an anomaly for the time being. Putting in a bull flag. The bull flag starts to fail. They run a test of the breakup candle low. And that's always the risk of those bull flag patterns. And we say that before the fact. What's the risk of the bull flag pattern? The risk is they run down to make a test of the low of the breakup candle that was originally creating the bull flag pattern. That's the flagpole, right? So when they ran a test, it breaks apart the flag pattern, but it doesn't break apart the bullishness, the bullish pattern. As long as they didn't close below that low, it's still intact. Nothing has really changed. It's just a different look, a different pattern. It's the trick, trap, fool, and frustrate crew shaking out the people playing long for the rise out of the bull flag pattern. That's all they did. Nothing more, nothing less. So from a technical perspective, looking at the daily chart, what is she poised to do? She's pushing higher. She's poised to continue to break out to new highs again until and unless we see a failure. Can we see a failure? Of course we can. At this point, we're going to use 416 as the bogey. If we find the market below 416 on hourly closes, they open the day on Friday below 416, something like that. That's the beginnings. That's the recipe for a failure. Until and unless you see something like that going on, they're poised to continue higher out of this bullish pattern that's been developing by them eating time off the clock in a rising trend formation with the 20 period moving average rising up and price holding the 20 period moving average. That's the story. Just as a refresher, when you look at the weekly chart, what do you see? You see an uptrend. Obviously, home base is a little far from current price, but it can stay that way. It's been that way for a while. We just note it. There's nothing we can directly do 
with that information. It's an awareness that Price really doesn't love to get too far from home base. When they do get too far, we can begin looking for some kind of a stall out, run sideways, let home base creep up the price. You know the routine. But other than that, all they're doing is back and forth, eating time off the clock, pushing higher. That's it. Until that changes, that's what's happening. We take the market at face value until the face changes. Then what do we do? We take it at face value. Said another way, we take her one day at a time, one candlestick at a time. How about inside the numbers? Today we're going to start with the last post and realize there's a method to the madness. And then we'll circle back to the beginning as we always do. But herein lies another day where pay attention because you can learn stuff. It's not just about what happened. It's about what we discussed along the way. What we discussed before it happens. The more you read this, the more you are a participant inside the numbers, the more you'll understand how the market works, the more you'll recognize things before I put them up on the board. So at 350, there's the gap into the end of the day. They filled a gap. We'll get back to all that later. 416 was the pivot. We called it an afternoon pivot earlier today. And they made it look like one thing and then did the other. Remember that. Write that down on a sticky real quick. So now we'll start with the pre-market commentary, and then you'll just have in the back of your mind the stuff that was said and the stuff that happened into the end of the day. Happy Thursday. Wake up slightly green with a little fanfare overnight. They're basically still eating time off the clock. So what are the early thoughts? And by the way, we'll circle back to stocks on the move. We had a healthy list of stocks on the move, and we had somewhat of a little bit of a bonanza going on this morning. It was a real busy morning inside the numbers, to say the least. So here we are, still at zero dark 30. The major indices are quiet. From a short-term perspective, they're teetering on an important spot. Yesterday, they had the late-day decline, which turns the short-term trend down. Short-term meaning intraday charts. Getting below yesterday's low of 4.15.15 and closing candles below opens the door for a test of 41350 give or take. The other side is interesting. Remember the target of 41725. Remember, this is early in the morning. Well, that happens to now be the same spot the bulls need to recapture to get the short-term trend back in the northern direction. Of note, there's a healthy list of stocks on the move today, and this is important stuff, so I'm going to go through it anyway. Again, it's in the all spirit of learning stuff. Some traders get uneasy and anxious when they see too many names. We only have to track the ones that are coming close to their numbers. They won't all get there, but the ones that do are the ones we want. And by the way, it's unlikely more than one at a time is hitting anyway. It's just the way it works the majority of the time. Trying to put your mind at ease when there's a long list of stocks on the move. Here's an example. It was a long list. We'll circle back to it later. But let's focus on some numbers real quick. So let's get our bearings. Today it's a 10 minute chart, right of the vertical is today's activity. Here's yesterday's low, 415.15. That's the area of interest early in the morning. So you can see what happened in the first 10 minute candle. They ran a test, they spiked yesterday's low. Why did they do that by the way? Because there are traders that are gonna sell the break. They're selling them in the hole. So the reason why this happens is, once traders sell them in the hole, the professional traders, trick, trap, fool, and frustrate crew immediately rip the market back in the other direction, issuing a pie in the face. Once the traders that shorted in the hole cover their shorts, book the loss, lick their chops, then trick and company sends the market back down toward where? 413.50. They didn't get there. That was my buy today. You'll see that later inside the numbers in the notes. That's okay. Doesn't mean there weren't trades on the board. So right out of the chute, we know a couple of things because different traders choose to trade different ways. Below yesterday's low on candle closes, the door opens for 413.50. Some traders just want to sell the break anyway, and if they held like their fingers on a chalkboard when the market ripped back up and they continued to hold, then they were at least rewarded somewhere in the vicinity of 413.50. So you know there's a target below yesterday's low. That's item number one. From an intraday perspective, they came pretty close. So even a short trader would have 
gotten close enough to the target. But that's not my style. I was buying the target. I was buying 413.50 for a rip back up in the other direction. However, they didn't get to 413.50. By the way, how about 417 and a quarter? It's a give or take. It was obviously attracted to price, or price was attracted to the number, I should say. And it was also resistance, overhead resistance. They did pull back. And then when they went up again into the end of the day, they went for a gap that existed right around 418.20. You'll also see that in the notes. So it's helpful to know the important numbers as the day gets underway before the day even gets started. 821, long before the market opens, in the spirit of being prepared, let's discuss what if. What if at some point she gets below Tuesday's low of 411.67? Well, closing hourly below would open the door for a pickup in volatility and some lower numbers we'll discuss if needed. It's what if, it's a just in caser. You have to know what the game plan is, what if, before the market opens, just in case. Here's the important thing in this 821 post. Trading down to around 413.50 isn't out of the ordinary if you think about garden variety retrace of the daily tail candle. Again, 821 in the morning, this is what I'm thinking. So we're either going to see a failure of the tail or further testing and a retrace. We can use 413.50 as a short-term line in the sand. Running a test and bouncing can begin a rally from that area. Getting below and closing candles below means the bears have the ball and Tuesday's lows or lower are on the table. 821, this is what I'm thinking. Now let's look at the daily chart again and play Monday morning quarterback and say, what happened today? What happened today is they ran a test, a retrace of the tail candle, and they took off to the upside, closed the gap, and finished near the highs. It's not a lot different than this. This is why I say there's stuff to learn in here because the reason I was thinking in terms of that is the same reason I taught that module in the course, Lazy E-mini Trader, because this stuff works not all the time, but it works a lot of the time. Now you wanna pinpoint an entry, and I was looking for a little bit lower this morning on the dip, I didn't get in, that's a different story. Now the day gets underway, how about a leadoff base hit in Redfin by 936, number two hitter Moderna base hit. I told you there was a bit of a bonanza going on at Stocks on the Move, so we'll circle back to those later. Let's move along a little bit, see what else we have. As the day keeps going, we're giving the numbers, the what ifs, if they get above this, then here's a target. If they get below this, this is the target. You can pause the video and read the notes for yourself and double check the work back on the charts to see what happened after the notes were posted. I want you to see what's discussed here. I want you to see what's being taught here every single day. It's not just the numbers. 10 o'clock, 10.07, again, still no change, 413.50, that's what I was zeroed in on. We're moving along. We'll circle back to Moderna. I'm not gonna go over that now. We'll do it with the chart. No change to the SPY. I've got a zone. 413.50 was the top of my zone today, down to 412.80. They didn't hit the top, so be it. I've said it nine times, 10 times. I won't say it again. Again, pause the video, read the notes. I'm gonna highlight a couple of other things. So let's keep going a little bit so we can get to those other things. Let's check this one out, 11.04. 4.14.20 is an important line in the sand on the south side. Running a test and getting out of there in a hurry is okay. Getting below and closing candles below opens the door for 4.13.50 and lower. If they run sideways for a while, any time off the clock under 4.15.40, they're building energy to take the next leg higher. That's the current schematic. So I'm giving you both sides because I'm gonna take a break for a while. But let's think about 414.20. Now let's think about this for a second because I could be on candid camera. So they didn't get to 413.50. The low here is 413.68. Then we're talking about 414.20. They can run a test. They get out of there in a hurry. It's good news. Guess what? Here's the low of 414.24 missing it by four cents. Now it's a give or take, but still, you can't make this stuff up sometimes. Fastly, again, we'll get back to stocks on the move. And then 11.25, they went right for the test to around 4.14.20 and took off 
to the upside. Funny how that works. Sometimes it's funny, sometimes it's not. About 12 o'clock, smack dab, high noon. Please refer to the 1055 post. Okay, what did that post say? Let's say they get through and start closing candles above 41540. What's the next big spot? Which would be a target and resistance? 41670 to 417 is the zone. With candles closing above 41540, it's on the table. Okay. Now let's see what we have. Here's your 41540. It's the second line from the bottom. So once they started getting above that, what happened? They ran right to the target. The post was 1055. That's back in this neighborhood here. They took a dip. They tested 41420. They took off. They busted through and they did the thing. It pays to know your numbers. Okay, back to high noon. You see what happens here. Above 4.17.25, fuel for another leg higher. The gap around 4.18.20. Now check this out. Now let's realize they missed it yesterday by not that much and sold off. It's like a recocking of the weapon. What does that mean? They may not stop at the gap if they go. Still back after lunchtime. Three and a half hours or so before they hit the gap, I'm telling you, they're not going to stop. That was, don't short the gap. We're moving along. Now we come back at 1232 with how do we treat the gap? Should they run up there sooner than later? Here's inside my head. They do it quickly, like within the next 30 to 45 minutes, which didn't happen. So it was not a short. They'll likely get rejected. If they pull back and stay in a chop shop formation, then a trader can be long for the ride up to fill the gap around 4.18.20. What happened? They rode up and filled the gap. Getting below and closing candles below 416 likely takes that concept off the table. Staying above and possibly running a test down in that area would be a reasonable long side trade as they don't close 10 and 15 minute candles below there. They did. That was sponsored by the Trick Trap Fool and Frustrate crew. And so let me finish out that post so you can read the rest on your own. If you so choose, what we'll do is scroll up and see what else happened. 416 is the line in the sand. It was the line in the sand over and over and over again. What happened was they played games with it. 416 is our afternoon pivot. And you can see here, highlighted as a red line in the sand. 416 was the issue. They had to stay above 416. We talked about it all day long. They closed two 10-minute candles below and two 15-minute candles below over here in the afternoon. And then, once they shook out enough traders, they took off to the upside and never looked back. 416 was the pivot. So I'll take you into the end of the day. You can pause the video and obviously read the rest of the notes on your own. But here's what I'll say. If you're trading in the market during the day and you're not using this information, I hope you have the same or similar information because this is pretty good. Here's a list of stocks on the move. It's a long list. RKT, Uber, Norwegian Cruise Lines, Fastly, Etsy, Cardinal Health, Pfizer, QUOT, who are they? RDFN, that's Redfin, and Moderna, the last one. Only one out of this entire list did not hit their price objective or entry target. Let's take a look at some charts. We're going to speed things up a little bit because I don't want the video to get too far extended beyond home base. But the first one we'll look at is rockets. And the obvious reason why I put this one on the board is because I wanted to be able to say we had a rocket ride. Here's a five minute chart. You can see what happened. Price got up to 1978 before pulling back. That's a tremendous rip off a $19 stock. We're talking day trades here. How about Uber? So Uber 46.45 was the number on the board bright and early. You see what happened. Got to a high of 47.85 before fizzling out. But guess what? That's like a buck 30 or so. Maybe even a buck 40 with the new math. Norwegian cruise, kind of a dud. I mean, technically it worked. But who's taking this trade in the afternoon after they ate time off the clock over the number all afternoon long? So really, technically, you want the one that comes straight into it. But the numbers work. Fastly, I thought this one had a chance to be low of day when it happened, 43.15. Now, I wouldn't blame a trader for not taking the trade. You see what happened, it hovered over the number. But it was a big number. And 43.15 worked to the point of 
4437. So when you think about a dollar 30 gain of $43, that's more than a base hit. You at least got to second base from a day trade perspective. Then it failed, but it still did the deal. Remember, base hits put you in the Hall of Fame. Stock was down 25% on the day by the time it got there. You have to think to yourself, why that number? There were other numbers. Why that number? Was nowhere near there at the opening bell. Just as an example, here's a weekly chart. Why not this breakup candle low? What kept me away from that? This is always part art form, part science. Etsy did a little dance. I didn't like this one. Made a low of 162.30 and bounced away. And you can see on the five minute chart, even made a low a little bit higher and bounced away more. That's really doing the deal. You don't want this trade anymore. Now, technically they did the deal off the second number, but the second number was close to the first number. And when the second number is close to the first number, the reason is, is because I can build a case either way that they can trade to either number and bounce. So when that happens, they both can work, but when they're jerking around above the first number, it's really a different kind of trade at the second number. It doesn't mean it can't work. It's just not necessarily the ideal scenario. That's the way I'll put it. Cardinal Health, how you doing? I don't really need to explain anything on this one, do I? Pfizer was the next one on the list that did not hit its number, so we'll skip that one. This QUOT was really a piece of garbage. It didn't really work. It didn't do anything. It just dripped all day long. Redfin worked real quick. You saw it in the notes inside the numbers, and then it failed. So the high was 56.97, so they gave you the base hit, and then that was it. And then when they came into the second number, if you were looking for the second number, they came up short and bounced. So the low here was 54.57, six cents away. They bounce, they give you the base hit. And what do I mean by that? The high in this candle here, even though they didn't hit the number, was 55.47. So they basically bounced a dollar, so they give you more than the base hit. And that takes the whole thing off the table from that point forward. So nobody should have been in Redfin. I go over this kind of stuff all the time. It was either the first number, you take a quick base hit, you sell half the position. When they come back down, you have to sell the other half, so you still have a profit. Life goes on. And you had to save the best for last. Moderna. 144.21. I think this was the first one I put on the board at zero dark 30. I had it. I had the number. I was licking my chops. And it was a one and done. You'll notice there was only one entry number on the board, and the stop was 140.50. Any hourly close below that and the thing just didn't work, period, full stop. And think about this one for a minute. There was a gap right here and I didn't cite the gap. I didn't think they'd get to the gap. Why is that? Honestly, I don't know. I had one number, I saw it, I really didn't think twice about it, I put it up on the board and I turned away and did something else. And Moderna was the number. Now, that wasn't the actual number that came out of the calculator, 144.21. It was lower. It wasn't the reason, but I'll give you a hint. The high in this candle here was 144. I'll just say that was part of the reason. Pretty remarkable rip off 144 and change. The high today was 163.47. You never know which ones are going to provide the rocket ride. What's going on over in Camp IWM? They're failing, they're failing, they're failing. They run a test, not all the way, but they run a test deeper into the breakup candle low or that general zone, and then they turn around and finish near the highs, yet still below the convergence of the same moving averages we've been discussing for the last several days. It's interesting. Think about what the S&P did the other day, put in the tail candle, and they ripped higher a couple of days later. All of a sudden, the IWM puts in a similar tail candle in the middle of nowhere, and it also creates another higher low, and they finish on the highs of the day. Now, nothing to say they can't eclipse or get above those moving averages tomorrow. That's certainly possible, but this is what happened today. This is where they finished today. It's interesting. We have another higher low. Low, higher low, higher low, tail. Are they going to do this? It's possible. What's the other side? Well, remember the weekly chart. We were very concerned with where they're going to close the week out, Friday's close. This low at 217.67 was really a weekly line in the sand. 
They didn't get all the way down there today. All they did was get to what? Interestingly enough, they ran a test of the weekly 20-period moving average. Now, are there any accidents or coincidences across the market? No. So this is what we've got. We take the market at face value each and every day. This is what's going on in the IWM. Weekly close above that spot, it's bullish, period, full stop. Higher low on the daily chart, that's bullish. Below the moving averages, not so bullish. But if they get above, that's bullish. It's a recapture and they'll run higher. What about the folks down at the transportation department? The trend is your friend until she dumps you. They're up 80 points, half a percent. They're at new highs or close to new highs made yesterday. There's nothing wrong here. We'll just move it along. The weekly chart is in the redonkulous camp, and the monthly chart is in the redonkulous squared camp. They'll turn around when they turn around. Right now, they're headed higher until we see some kind of reversal start from an intraday perspective. It will morph onto the daily chart and so on. Right now, we have nothing like that. The folks out in Silicon Valley, well, we can make a case right here, and we're looking at the first thing that just jumped off the page at me, and I'm saying, I saw a move lower, and basically this is the beginning of a bearish, flaggish, wedgish kind of pattern, some kind of channel developing down here. Now, we don't know how long this would take, but if it keeps doing this in this channel, then it's building energy to bust through and make more lows. What takes that off the table? They close the day above 334, they'll run up to fill the gap, they'll try and get above the 20 period moving average, and we have a whole different thing working than a bearish, flaggish, wedgish kind of thing. So the bear thing gets busted with closes first hourly and then daily above 334, period. Anything wrong with the financials, pushing to new highs, the trend is your friend, it's bullish, you just move along. There's nothing to see here. How about Smash Mouth? Certainly doesn't look like the financials. So it was an up day, a couple of bucks, less than 1%. But it's still in the same position that we found the cues just a moment ago. It's in a bearish, wedgish kind of thing, doesn't look too great scenario. So we have divergences out here. That's why we watch and analyze every single day. It's going to be very important to find out where they close the week across all these markets. If I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you, without you, these videos are not possible. We're going to pull the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.